inside leg to outside rein is a, a term, a phrase that is often used in riding. And it's actually very crucial to good riding and to creating and supporting good healthy movement from our horses. However, it's also one of these terms that is commonly misunderstood or just not understood at all. You know, what does that actually mean? Does this mean that we're constantly holding the inside leg on and pulling on the outside rein? What is the horse supposed to do in response to this? And why is it even important? So in this video, we're going to be exploring inside leg to outside rein, and I'm gonna be sharing an exercise from one of my mentors, Angelo Teletine, that is really useful for not only you as the rider, feeling what this actually feels like, what this concept is, but also for um, training the movement from your horse as well. Inside leg to outside rein begins with our inside leg asking the horse to step more deeply underneath of themselves with their inside hind leg, to step more under the center of their mass, under the center of their body. As they do this and they push off of that leg, if they're relaxed through their back, if they're not tense and hollow, but they're relaxed, then it allows that motion to come up from the push of the hind leg, to come up through their withers, and then to elongate the neck, creating that feeling of the horse then filling up the outside rein and reaching forward into the contact and reaching forward with their neck. Outside rein means that we need to be here to support that, to meet that contact, and also to limit the amount of bend. And you'll see when I start riding here in this demo that if I just let my outside rein go completely loopy and I don't support it all, it often will mean that the horse is gonna become overbent. They're gonna overbend through their neck. So the outside rein just supports and meets that. So then we can start to adjust. Do we want a lot of bend if we're riding a tight circle? Do we want just a little bit of bend? We can adjust the amount of bend that the horse is able to do with the outside rein. And these aids aren't just completely, you know, we're not just squeezing with our inside leg and holding with our outside rein. There's a little give and take that happens, especially with the inside leg. We might ask for just a little bit more stepping under. We might soften our leg in response to that stepping under to release. And with our outside rein, we might close our hand if we're asking the horse to slow down and steady. And then we might soften our fingers without totally dropping the contact, but just softening our fingers to allow the horse to reach even more forward or to go more forward. So this is the concept of inside leg to outside rein. And let's go ahead and uh, ride here and you'll see what this looks like in action. So when we're riding a circle and we're riding with a bend, the idea of the horse moving from the inside leg to the outside rein means that the horse is slightly bent and they're bent around the rider's inside leg. So I should feel like my inside leg is kind of like the center of the curve of his body. Meaning if I do this and I start letting his shoulders fall to the outside, I let go of my outside rein and I have too much inside rein, you saw how first he drifted out, then he kind of cut in, and he had way too much bending through his neck. But instead, if I have my contact with my outside rein, and I'm gonna bring the outside rein slightly against his neck, riding on this circle, I'm not taking it over here, because then I can start to actually throw him off balance by taking his nose too far to the outside of the circle and causing him to even lean in a little. I'm just finding a contact and bringing my, my rein so that it's against the neck. And now from here, I wanna create this feeling where again, my inside leg is the center of the bend. So you can see when we find this nice connection where he's got a, a little bit of bending, he's bent around my inside leg, my contact with my outside rein here stays steady. And I really feel the contact through my um, ring and my middle finger. So it's really that connection here. I'm not gripping the rein. I'm not tightening and pulling back with my um, hand really tight. My fingers actually are closed but soft. And I just feel that contact all the way through my arm, into my shoulder, and actually into my back. 
good boy. Now he's also getting a little bored just trotting around the circle as I'm talking. But notice how my inside rein can be loose here. So I can take this inside rein forward. Sometimes I need to just ask him to keep his attention to the inside, but then my inside rein can stay loose and my outside rein is keeping the um, shape of the bending and keeping the contact. Now it might be a little tough to see, but I'm occasionally giving just a little cue with my inside leg. It's not constant because remember that anytime we keep a constant pressure, we can end up dulling the horse. They just get desensitized to that pressure constantly being there. So with my inside leg, I'll apply just a little when I feel him bend, when I feel him take a deeper step under with his inside hind leg, because that's what my inside leg is really cueing. When I feel that, then I soften my leg. And then I might just put a little bit on and then I soften it. And a little bit and I soften it. But I wanted to demonstrate first so you kind of have a visual of what this looks like. And now I'm gonna give you an exercise to help you feel this and also uh, to help teach this to your horse. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna come into the fence line and I'm gonna ride into the fence line at about a 45 degree angle. When I reach the fence line, I'm going to slightly open my rein that's closest to the fence and I'm gonna put on my leg. Now, when we're talking about bend, we have to remember that the inside of the bend is actually the concave part of the horse's body. So when I go into this fence, I'm gonna have an inside bend going this direction to my right. We often think of inside or outside just related to where the fence line is, but it's actually how our horse's body is shaped. And for this exercise, I'm gonna use the fence to help create the bend and to help create this movement. So I'm gonna just walk through it and just really kind of talk through each piece so that you can see what's happening as we actually do it in action here in a minute. So I'm coming into the fence. I'm starting off at a slight angle here, stopping just for demonstration. I'm gonna open what is my inside hand in this exercise because we're creating a bend here towards the fence line, towards your wall if you're riding inside. So this is gonna be the inside of my bend. So I'm slightly opening my inside rein. I'm gonna be closing my inside leg, the one closest to the fence. And then I'm gonna be closing my outside rein. So this is an exercise for creating that inside leg to outside rein feeling. And this closing of the outside rein is just the same concept as what I demonstrated earlier riding that circle. So I'm gonna walk in here, create a slight opening rein towards the fence. Good boy. <laughs> And notice here, there's this moment where he steps under right there and I can fill up, I can feel him fill up my outside rein right there. That's that feeling of the inside leg to outside rein. It's a way to start teaching your horse to step under and it's a way to start um, learning this, learning this feeling for yourself. Now, what you wanna be really careful of is not pulling on the horse. We're just using the reins laterally, opening the inside, closing the outside. We also want our horse to be round through this exercise, meaning we don't want them taking their head really high and just stepping over with their hind legs. We really want that step with the, the hind leg, the inside hind leg, one closest to the fence, to be more underneath their body. Good. Even if it's just a little one, like that was just a very slight one. I was kind of running out of space for our scope there for this demonstration. So I just released as soon as he took that little step and then walked on. I can do the same thing over at this fence line. But what this is creating is not only is it using the environment to set up an exercise to trigger this movement, good boy, but it's creating that feeling for me as the rider of the horse stepping under with the inside hind leg, lifting the weather and filling up the outside rein as they bend correctly. So it's not just flopping the neck over, it's not over bending, it's really creating that bend from the inside hind leg, stepping under the body, which is the concept of this idea of the aids of good boy, 
of inside leg to outside rein. Good boy. So there's a few kind of troubleshooting things that happen. The first is not having enough forward movement. I'm kind of falling into that trap right now. Good boy. So I'm going to just do a few times here where I ask him to step forward a little more briskly. Good. Good. So we want enough forward movement. We have to be careful not to get too greedy and ask for too much, meaning too many steps down the rail for what your horse's strength level is. And then we also need to be careful to keep the forward movement. So this is a lateral movement along the fence. What I don't want to do, so you see here, if I come in, not enough forward movement, I start pulling back with my inside rein, see how he just flips around. That's not what we want from the exercise because that doesn't get that concept of moving down the rail and stepping under with the hind leg. So let me come in again. I'm actually going to create a bigger circle. Even this small circle, I don't want to come here with my bending this way and then suddenly try to flip it because again, see how I really quickly lose all my forward motion. He's putting his head over the fence. Not what, the, not what the exercise is supposed to look like. So let's come in again. Let's create a more forward movement. So I'm here, I'm just sensitizing my go forward, good boy, and then half hot, go forward, good. So each time I do this, I'm starting with a subtle aid. Whoop, good. And then I'm using a bit more stronger one, good. And now he's starting to push forward. And I just need a half hold a little quicker now to say, don't, don't trot, just push forward when I say go. Now I'm going to slightly bend towards the fence. My inside right leg in this case, good boy. Outside leg closes there, there, there. I also want to keep my um, pelvis straight. So I'm going to come through one more time and demonstrate the uh, another common mistake in this exercise, which is getting really crooked. So here I'm going to make this mistake of getting really crooked, of leaning over to one side to try to make this movement. And we can see we're making it, but now look how he's really over bent. Good boy. And my weight was very uneven and balanced. So we'll do it one more time at this fence line up here. So we come in with a forward walk, open a little bit with the inside hand, leg closest to the fence, and the stepping under. This rein, outside rein closes in here against his neck. Good, and we create that feeling. This exercise is courtesy of Angelo Teletim and his building the show jumper course here at Horse Class. And now I would love to hear from you. What is another riding concept or maybe riding advice that you've heard, that you've been given, that you've never quite understood? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. And if you're not watching this on Horse Class, go there because that's where the best, <laughs> that's where the best comments and conversation are.